Hello again, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to Train Sim World. We're looking at some CSX Heavy Haul missions here today. We're going to be loading up with some coal for hopefully a power plant or something to power America. That's an awfully big locomotive there. You've been assigned a unit coal train today, which is currently at Rockwood Loading Facility. First, complete coal loading, then bring the train back to Cumberland Terminal. All right, roger that. So we're going to hop aboard 426 here and head out to uh, load up some coal. This is really a very uh, interesting and uh, very detailed train simulator. I don't know if this is the most uh, detailed one on the market, but this definitely uh, has piqued my interest quite a bit in trains as uh, there's a lot to do and a lot of different uh, locomotives and locations to do it, though the, I guess the door control is a little tricky trying to grab the handle there. There we go. All right, so we are now in the locomotive, and we're going to hop into the driver's seat and load up with some coal that you see behind us. Uh, all of these uh, train cars here are going to be loaded up, and then we're going to connect to the train car next to us and load that one as well, or at least uh, connect it all together, couple it all together. Wow, look at that. You can actually see traffic driving. I haven't seen that before. A very nicely detailed game, I must say. It's really my first time playing it, and I'd say the details kind of decrease the further you get from the train. But if you're sitting right in the cab, it really looks beautiful uh, from the locomotive's uh, window, to which you can even open. There's really nice detail on this thing, and the ability to turn on wipers, turn, turn on even the fan. That's cool, although there is no animation to that, I think. Oh, well, it's all good. Okay, let's go ahead and get started then. We're going to go ahead and release our brakes and uh, move out to uh, load up with coal. We're going to go ahead and put her into uh, forward, and we're going to set our uh, speed control on this computer here. Uh, let's see, speed control under button 5. Uh, we're going to go on to go to slow mode, which is going to be off. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And then uh, 5, we're going to want to do about 2 actually when we load, but we'll turn it on for now at 5, and then we'll slow it down to 2. Okay, let's proceed. We'll pull the uh, power back to 1. Brakes are disengaged. Everything should be good to go. I think we're supposed to give... Uh, I actually don't remember... Uh, one thing I need to work on learning is horns. I, you're supposed to honk a certain amount of times when you're proceeding forward and in reverse. And also lighting and such like that, too. I'll follow the game's in-game instructions because those matter most. But as for, you know, are you supposed to have your lights on or off? I'm not sure. Are you supposed to have them on dim, bright, bright ox? I mean, given the weather, it's a little rainy out here today or hazy. So I guess we'll see. We'll proceed forward then at uh, 5 miles an hour to load up there at the coal facility. And once all these train cars behind us are full, we'll then switch tracks and we'll go back and pick up the other set of cars. You're going to actually be able to see these things load in real time, which is really cool. Let's take a look at some of the other uh, buttons here. You have your EOTD uh, emergency. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Different lights and dimmers and switches all over. Uh, acknowledge button for uh, startup, I believe. Really cool. You can actually uh, walk around the cabin in its completion, too. You can actually go, uh, I think, into the back here. Uh, or, well, the back of some trains. I don't think this one actually has a door. You can go out for that way. But you can get out behind us uh, through the door behind and uh, go out and walk along the train, which is pretty cool. All right, we're proceeding at just about 5 miles an hour. We're going to go ahead and slow things down so we can load properly. So we're going to go ahead and reduce to 2, which is our target speed here. Slow speed is on. Target speed is at 2. I believe this maximum slow speed is 10. So if you're moving around a yard or something like that, you can do it that way. All right, we're going to slow her down now. She's at uh, 3.1. You can turn all this HUD off. You can turn off, you know, for example, the uh, speed indicators and goal indicators. I think you can turn all that off if you want an ultimate realism experience. And I wonder if she works with, um, I wonder if it also works with Track IR. I bet it does. That would be a great thing uh, to have at your disposal. All right, so we're now going at about 1.1. There we go. Speeder up there. Computer. There we go. We're all at, at the mercy of the computer. Uh, but the cars, of course, are going to couple together and make different sorts of noises as we uh, go around. I think, actually, you'll be able to hear the uh, the uh, train cars. I'm going to go to the external camera here just to take a look at everything. Yeah, you can hear that nice crunching from the coupling of the cars. Oh, yeah. There's something special about loading up uh, freight cars. But this game also does offer passenger services for uh, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Germany. Would love to see Dutch trains. I would love to see some uh, Japanese trains. It would be a very cool thing to actually put that in there. So you, you can see here the large coal reserve that the excavators are, uh, you know, preparing to load into the uh, into the coal loading station. And we'll proceed at about two miles an hour to load each one of these CSX cars with coal, which you can see there's quite a few of them. So all we have to do is basically sit in the cab and wait for the process to go along itself. So uh, out of this large hopper here, you'll see coal drop down into the cars. And we need to get eh, pretty close to about, I think they'll give you the green light if you get about 90% full. But really, 98 to 100% is probably how full we want these cars to be. So let's go ahead and take a look at the process. So underneath that yellow lip there is where the coal will come out. 
and it'll be dispensed into each one of these cars. I believe we're hauling uh, 25 cars in this line and then uh, 27 more cars in the next formation. So uh, well over uh, 50 cars that will be on our next journey and that'll be the next part of the mission. But so far, it's just all about the loading. Perfect on that first car, 99%, very nice. And in the green light. So each and every single one of these cars has to be loaded all the way to the back. Once this is complete, there's a switch over here, right there, that will be a switching uh, to go back to the other side. So essentially, uh, we'll get off this track and go uh, to this track here in the center. And we'll back all the line all the way up to uh, this next set of cars and we'll proceed forward and switch locomotives. So right back there where you see that other car. The weather is beautiful. The art uh, style, our graphics, I guess, are beautiful. It uh, really looks real. Um, I, I like it a lot. I think there could be more detail further out, especially since I kind of like to break away from the train and look at stuff. Uh, but it's not, it's not something that ruins the experience. And in fact, if you're sitting in the train, you'd probably only be d able to see a, maybe a block or two if you were in a downtown area. But it is cool to see vehicles sitting around. I would like to see some more people walking around and doing stuff. But I guess at, a, uh, at an actual job, you're probably not going to see anybody out too much uh, away from their job. Everybody's inside the factories doing whatever they do. Wow, this is really cool. I wonder actually if this is a mine or if this is just a facility where uh, coal is being transferred maybe from, you know, trucks and trailers to um, actual trains, uh, depending on how they get the coal out. I don't, I don't actually know if this is a mine. It looks like it could be, though. I think it called it a technical coal facility. But anyway, we'll let all these cars get loaded up, and then I will see you all when we switch tracks and load up uh, to the next uh, set of cars. All right, looks like we're reaching the end of the line. There's only three more cars to fully load with coal, and then once that's complete, we'll pretty much uh, stop to uh, get out of the train and walk back to the uh, switching uh, platform there to uh, throw the switch to go directly in reverse. So uh, all these cars have been pretty much full to 99 to 100%, so it's been a pretty good loading experience so far. The game doesn't tell you certain detail like that. You have to kind of remember everything. So it's a good experience for, uh, you know, once you go through the tutorial to learn everything. So that's what I'm basically, uh, you know, remembering as we're playing uh, through all of this. So we got 99% there. Last car going up to 100. And uh, we'll get ready to stop the train then. All right, 30, 40, 50%. And we're almost there. Loading is uh, rather quick, too, by the way, for these train cars. Pretty, pretty astonishing. Oh, it actually stopped directly there. That's weird. Oh, now it's rolling again. I didn't do anything that time. All right, let's go ahead and stop the uh, train co uh, completely here. Let's go ahead and turn off uh, slow speed, and let's bring the train to a complete stop. All right. Go all the way up to full service. Perfect. Okay, so now we can switch the track. Uh, let's see, is there any other way out of the train? On this side? This, this. Oh, that's not... Okay, I didn't know you couldn't access from that side of the train, but the door does lead to the uh, right side of the train if you're looking forward. All right, so now we got a little bit of a walk to go all the way towards the uh, back of the uh, switcher. So I guess I'm going to go on a little bit of a run. All right, less than 100 yards away now is the switch. We just basically need to walk up to it. But this is where all the coal was loaded. Even little details of, uh, you know, all the uh, coal on the ground that would be uh, dropped between cars. I think that's pretty neat. I like that. Though I feel the coal should be a little bit uh, darker color. What do you guys think? Is that is that the right color for coal or not? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But let's go ahead and switch our uh, tracks here now. All right, perfect. So now we're going to connect to the 27 cars over that direction. Uh, this red circle, by the way, I think is when you're standing on the tracks. I'm just standing a little little too close. So let's go ahead and walk back to the train, and we'll throw her in reverse. Well, walk, I mean run, for me, but anyway, here we go. All right, back to home sweet home. We're going to hop back in the locomotive. Let's get back up in there into the control section, and we'll put her in reverse and connect to the other cars. There we are. All right, back into the driver's seat. Uh, let's see. Couple to formation. All right, we'll have to put her in reverse now. Should be able to set our computer as well. I think our uh, limit here should be 10.
There we go. Alright, we should be moving here in just a second. I like how we can look out the window. It's pretty cool, actually, to be able to... Oh, what? Exterior blind. Oh, huh. I didn't even know that was... Wow, I didn't even know that was a thing. Look at that. That's neat. And the sounds do change when you open the door as well, so that's pretty pretty astonishing that they put in that level of detail. All right, so we uh, when we reverse, we probably want to keep it at about uh, 5 miles an hour or so. And that shouldn't be happening. Huh. Oh, that's because this car is not full completion. I wonder if it'll do that with every car. So I guess we're going to reverse and top off any percent that wasn't 100% full, or if it's just uh, animating that way. But we have to directly uh, go in reverse, so it's... That's kind of weird. I guess it'll just top off every single car. Alright, so the uh, train is going to continue at about 10 miles an hour in reverse, and then we're going to connect to the other train cars there, and then pull forward uh, from behind us. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to connect to a different locomotive that's behind us with cars, and then uh, there's going to be, I believe, two locomotives connected together to pull it forward, I think is how that's going to work. So let's go ahead and see uh, the back end here. We can actually uh, move around a little bit too, which I think is pretty nice. In this camera mode, you can move around but stay linked to the final car. So you'll see the connection here coming in, a, in about 600 yards. Again, a very beautifully detailed game. We can zoom in and see the water flowing. Uh, there's haze, so things aren't too gorgeous right now. But uh, it, it definitely is beautiful, though. I mean, it's just incredible. I love the detail. you got puddles there, debris on the ground. That's interesting to see another hopper there like that with uh, just a bunch of stuff sitting around. Must be unused. I don't know. Cool to see dumpsters and uh, cars, trucks, and vans all around. Propane tanks. Nice little details. All right, we're going to go ahead and slow our speed down. So let's set speed now to uh, 5. Though it won't matter too much. So once we hit, we're probably going to come to a full stop. There you go. A little more of a bump than we're used to, but there she goes, full stop. Okay, uh, set reverser to neutral and auto brake to full service. Roger. Let's go ahead and bring the power down. Reverser to neutral and full service. Done. All right, integrated function display. Select the air brake screen one. That's here. Uh, let's see, cut off, or out, I mean, and then set trail, and then save uh, there. So what we're doing here is essentially just setting the braking mode for the train as we run the trains in the front. Uh, switch off systems, so that means to the left we have to shut off the uh, engine run, generation field, and the uh, controls. All right, now we're going to go out to another train. Uh, let's see here. Um, I guess we'll just exit out the back. I do like going out the front, though. That's my favorite. Okay, so now we have to walk back uh, along uh, twice as long as we did before. Last time it took me maybe about three minutes to walk the whole length of the train. Now it's probably going to take about uh, maybe uh, f uh, maybe 10 minutes or m more, actually. Probably 15 minutes or so. So anyway, I'll see you guys at the next locomotive. Uh, to be honest, that wasn't even that long of a run like I thought it would be. But at least it simulates having to walk back and forth to do this kind of stuff. All right, so here's the two locomotives in the front. We're going to hop in the lead locomotive and uh, sit in the engineer's seat, as we're told. So uh, let's go ahead and hop up here on the front side, and we'll go in through the front door. All right, there she is. In through the door. Weird, like in order to close these doors, we almost have to select like the window or something. There's a it's, a, it's a difficult thing to close this front door. I think the devs will have to kind of maybe work on that one a little bit. That's the only one that's really a pain. Okay, into the seat we go, and uh, we should be ready to rock now, and uh, proceed ahead. So independent bail off. We'll go ahead and pull her all the way back to bail off. Then I think we need to wait five minutes for the brakes to uh, charge up. But uh, as soon as the icon pops up. Uh, the brakes will take five minutes to release. Once complete, the Rockwood marker will appear and you may proceed. Uh, that's how long it takes in real life, but I think they just let you do it pretty much immediately because nobody wants to wait. So, um, Okay, reverser in forward, which it is, and we will proceed at uh, about 10, I think. Let's set speed because I think we don't have to go that far, only a mile. So let's just go ahead and set 
set speed uh, just because it's good practice speed controls this button uh, slow speed control set to uh, 10 on it's basically a cruise control really like a limiter or governor for the train oh wait that's braking okay we'll proceed in P1 I suppose we're supposed to honk, I guess. I don't even know. Is it three for forward and uh, one, uh, two for reverse? You'll have to let me know down below in the comment section. I'm not entirely certain, but uh, definitely need some practice and good learning experience for somebody who's never driven a train. This is almost, uh, of course, there's way more things than you have to do here, but uh, it's a good experience for somebody just learning uh, for their first time. This could be a good training uh, implement for anybody wanting to go into the, to the locomotive business. Uh, please do not tamper with brake valve settings. Huh. Who would ever do that? Not me. Really nicely uh, detailed cab and uh, desk and chairs. Everything even down to the uh, seat height adjustment. Wow. Very cool. Alright, we're going to proceed uh, for about one mile here. I think we could probably pick up the pace, but... In a train like this where we're only going a mile, I, I'm, I don't need to go that fast. Besides, we get a little bit of time to look around the interior of the cabin. Uh, there's multiple trains that are very detailed as well. Uh, for the United States, you can also do the Northeast Corridor around New York and uh, drive an Amtrak train, as well as these uh, CSX locomotives which, with a few different uh, interiors. I guess this is the more high-tech one. Um, oh, I see a train uh, crossing coming up. I do know what to do here. Alright, I believe that was correct for that. Oh wow, the sun visor too? Jeez, that's so cool. Now oh, you can hear the train crossing dinging off. And a beautiful bridge there, very nice. Alright, let's take a look from outside. So here's the back end of the train with the locomotive we used initially to load the cars. And she's coming along with us. She's in trail mode, so that way it's basically just uh, being pulled along by this main train. So that way it can come behind us and lead the way. Now one thing I need um, to practice on is braking. So every time I uh, do a live stream or a recording of this, this is always a nice practice. We might overshoot our goal uh, slightly. I hope not. I would rather uh, come in a little short. But uh, one thing that I guess takes a lot of practice which isn't too hard, but it'll just take a little refining as to uh, stop perfectly. And, uh, you know, <laughs> when you're driving a train full of coal, it doesn't stop on a dime or a quarter or 350. It's more like a couple thousand dollars you got to keep in mind with a couple of thousand tons behind you, 100,000 tons that you really need to uh, watch out for. All right, well, we'll be there in about a half mile. And uh, the next part of the uh, task is... Uh, to uh, proceed down a very challenging line during a uh, storm. So I think it's going to get a little more rainy here uh, very shortly. If the weather changes, we'll see it possibly rain. And then uh, it'll be on to the next scenario, which is to actually drive through a kind of a, sto a storm of some sort. I don't know if it's like a or just rainy weather or if it's really uh, windy and I don't know if it'll hail or if there's a storm that will pop up, but w I guess we will see. Right, we're about 900 yards away, so it's a good time to start slowing her down. Oop, that's not what you want to do. So we'll go ahead and head into idle now and just kind of coast most of the way. Beautiful out there. I love seeing the river like that. Really nice to look at. Traffic can be seen driving on the bridge. It's getting very, very hazy out there. It is nice to have that HUD in the corner at all times, so that way you can uh, look around while you also drive the train, too. It's a little bit of a uh, kind of a tour at the same time. You're, you're leading a little bit of a tour uh, while you're also driving the train itself, and that's really fun. You can do your job, but also have a fun time doing it. There goes a little another, another little delivery van there. Uh, you can see our lights shining on the top of the train bridge. Let's take a look outside the train. Well, isn't that beautiful? Very efficient way to haul cargo cross-country, too, by the way. Probably the most efficient way, I would say. 
Obviously, if you're hauling coal, a semi-truck is not as effective as a train, and nobody would ever put it in a plane. That would be an insane thing to uh, to haul around in a uh, in an air aircraft would be uh, other uh, other coal. Maybe jet fuel. They do that, of course, in air fueling, which is really cool if you've ever seen that. Mid-air refuel is quite the thing. I wonder if Air Force One has the ability to mid-air refuel. It must, right? It's probably got quite an immense range on that. What do you think the range of this train is, by the way? If, if you were to take one locomotive, no cargo, just full tank, just drive forever, what, what is the range of one of, these, uh, one of these trains? I guess you'll have to let me know down below. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get uh, ready to stop. By the way, if you've enjoyed this video so far, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button, too, to let me know you'd like me to continue playing through with these scenarios. They're very simple, but um, very enjoyable. Load train with coal and uh, proceed to junction, you know, that type of thing. I, I really think that's quite, quite immensely cool. It's really a, really a neat thing. All right, we're going to have to come to a complete stop here in a minute. We're just getting ready to slow down here. About 100, less than 100 yards away. Eighty yards. All right, just 50 yards now. Just a little bit more power then. A little bit more. She seems to, uh, the train really, once it gets under about maybe one mile an hour, she just comes to a complete stop. So there's a little bit of a coasting area. There's a sweet spot that i got to find that's like at about almost two and a half, three miles an hour. That's kind of where you want to coast at before you come to a stop. Oh. And that should be perfect right about, right about here. Oh, not even that, actually. There we go, that's what I want. Three, three and a half is about the sweet spot. Minimum reduction. And full stop. Perfect. So I think the longer it takes you to do this too, by the way, I think it'll start raining. I just wanted to throw on the wipers because I've seen that before. So uh, very, very cool. 31 minutes and 59 seconds to load up this train and complete the objective. And uh, wow, you can see how far we had to walk. We, I think we actually probably walked further than the train moved, but that's not necessary. All right, folks, if you enjoyed this and would like to see more, again, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button to vote to see more of this uh, content on the channel. There's a second part to this mission where now we have to drive the train. So if you'd like to see that, let me know. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for commenting down below on helpful hints and tips and being so kind and courteous. You all have yourselves a great day. Thanks for rolling along the rails with me. Goodbye, everyone.